God and Evangelist Campbell, her book from Bitter to Better has helped me. I have another book my brother sent me from Sumter, South Carolina. It's the Red Sea Wolves, a powerful book, bless our God. And with these two, we have come up with a message for you today entitled, Call Chosen. Say that there are some that have chosen, been chosen from the call. You know there's a word that said, many are called, but few chosen. We're all called to be saints. But then God has chosen some of us for special work. That's our God. And we're going to read from 1 Peter 5 and 6, Matthew 6, 33, and Matthew 22, 14. Bless our God. We'll get you those scriptures. And then if you want them, just to write it to um, meditate on God's word. Bless our God. 1 Peter 5 and 6, Matthew 6, 33, Matthew 22, 14. Bless God. First one read, Peter, first. Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And then our second one, Matthew 6, 33. Bless our God. He tells us in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And Matthew 22, 14, For many are called, but few are chosen. God bless your servant this day. Bless me that I deliver your word as you have given it to me in the power of conviction. And open the ears and hearts of your people to receive your word and grow into spiritual giants for your glory. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated at the house of the Lord. This message comes today to encourage the church who's been on the ministry for 29 years and also the saints that the Lord has given here at Restoration to lift up the glory of the Lord in this part of the vineyard. And we're saying that if you are people that have sick for the Holy Ghost, you've been through so much, and you got to the place in your life, say, I'm just sick of what's going on, and I want something better. And then there are those that have, the devil has beaten up from one side to the other. And there have been times when you got to the place where you didn't think there was any hope for it. Bless God. You look for family and friends to help you, and they say, well, look, I done did enough for you. I'm through with it. You worn me out. How many of you heard that, that old gospel? Man go from his, his mother, lean on his mama, and he kept leaning till his mama died. Then he went to his daddy, lean on his daddy till his daddy died. Wow. Then he went to his sister and said, hold it. He ain't taking me out. This is it. Bless our God. And then, bless our God, when you are out to your desperate end, you're down for the ride, the last half, you know the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you are at the point of destruction. And here comes Jesus. He comes to your rescue. He delivers. He set you up for better. Bless our God. So much better to when people see you now. They got to stop and look. Is, is that her? Is that him? Come on. They look different. Something different about him. Come on. Praise our God. You are the redeemed. Bless our God. God has changed you. Made you brand new. Make people wonder. What happened? One of my friends told me, Bless our God on one occasion. She came out of the project. And in the project, you know, you came with folks and do a lot of ungodly things. And she said she used to smoke drugs, that stuff, whatever you want. Smoking, dealing drugs, and all of that. Their lives were washed out with folks she came. But then she got saved. And after getting saved, she decided to go back to the community to witness the people there about what Jesus had done for her. And she met up with one of the guys she used to hang out with. And he looked at her. He said, a profound statement. How did you get it? Wow. Huh. I, I thought that 
the sofa. How did you get out? People are what people, everybody don't want to be in sin. Everybody don't want to be in the ditch of degradation and everybody crying at them and they say, they want to change. But the enemy, that old devil, he's forever pulling and nagging at them. And it seems as though they can't move. So he asked her that profound question. Did you get out of here? You know what? There are some people that have been in the church. And they've tried church. And they sit home now looking at women. Wondering, what else can I do? If you've been in the church and the church didn't help you, what else are you going to do? But I'm going to tell you, you got to come back. Encourage your friends. Encourage your family members to seek Jesus. Bless our God. The devil wants to kill. He wants to steal us away. And once stealing us away from Christ, he wants to get us so wrapped up in sin that we don't know no, nothing else but sin. And Romans tell us that there are people that sin and enjoy. And enjoy others that do it. But God is calling for us to sanctify ourselves from all unrighteousness. And I love our Paul when he talked to the church. He started naming all those sins that some of us get caught up in. Fornicators, adulterers, adulterers, infeminine, abusers of self, with mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers that you always fight and fussing. Extortion is always thinking of some slick way to take money from somebody else. Always thinking of a way I can get, um, I, I got something you want to buy. They done stole it. Now they want to sell it to you. Wow. Extortioners, they want something for nothing. Always looking for a way to get something from somebody else. But Paul said, such were some of you. That's right. We were caught up in that one time. Amen. Bless our God. But God delivered us. And he delivered us so we can preach deliverance to somebody else. We once were some of those deviant sinners. Mm -hmm. But now we are brand new creatures in Christ. Even if we were just born in sin and shaping the nickel, you know somebody always say, oh, I ain't never did all that. I was always was good. But guess what? The mother of Jesus was. But we found her in the upper room tearing for the Holy Ghost just like everybody else. So we all need Jesus. We all need the Holy Ghost. Bless our God. Corinthians 6 reminds us that Jesus came to save us all. Whether we were just born in sin or whether we were caught up in some of these deviant sins that we just mentioned. But we hear God in Matthew saying, in uh, the book of Romans telling us to humble ourselves. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he is going to elevate you. Everybody want to work in God. There's so many things that you can do in God's house. Here we are. There are ushers. There are deacons. There are helpers. There's a, there's a secretary. There's always some work. Just look around. The scripture tells us, so we've always heard from our pastor, whatever your hand finds to do, do it. If you helping somebody else, do help them. And be good at helping. Bless our God. God honors you for that. But you know the most important work God called us for is being a saint. Being a saint of the most high God. God is not going to come back asking about nobody else but you. And the question is, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you lived according to his righteousness? That's all God is calling us for. Then we hear in Matthew 5 and 3, I love this one, when it says be humble, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall receive the kingdom of heaven. That's all he asks you, be poor in spirit. But when he says humble, it's like being poor. But when he says be humble, it's being self-denial. It's putting God first, putting somebody else first ahead of you. Not that poor creature that always looking for a handout. That's not what poor means. Poor means humbling yourself to God and for the ministry. That's what humble means. 
And God says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And in due season, in due time, he will reward you. He also reminds us in first, in first Peter, the fourth chapter, the first and second verse, says, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now that's the key with being humble, is to suffer. Nobody's going to get in the suffering line. We asked for the suffering line today. Nobody's going to go in there. I know I'm not. But there are times when God put us there. And if God put us there, we got to stay there with a humble spirit, receiving that God is working out something better in us. He says, you got to suffer to be like him. He suffered. Well, if Jesus suffered, can't we suffer? So when you're going through difficult situations, thank God for it. Praise your way out of it. Because God is going to make you better. That was another song we used to say. Make me better, Lord. And the only way we can be made better is to suffer. To suffer for Christ means that you are humbling yourself to Christ. It means that you are denying yourself, putting him first, and putting others ahead of you. How many of us have said, I choose Jesus. I want him in my life. I like the other phrase we use a, a lot. Whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, please don't do it without me. How many of you have heard that one if you haven't said it yourself? Bless our God. Remember me. Well, guess what? That might be true. Whatever Jesus is doing in the season and you want him to count you in, it just might be something. I look at the old man tribe, uh, Job. They tell me that Job went through suffering for 18 years. Can you imagine? His children dying and being killed in a trouble. There wasn't a house fell in on. They were at a park. Then all of, for whatever reason, disaster came and destroyed all of his farms. Everything he had was destroyed. They said within a day. And then he had boils on his body from his head to suffering. And guess what? God didn't tell him anything. He could not hear from God. Sometimes we're suffering. And people want to say to you, I thought you said you were sick. Why are you going through this way? It is the will of God. Whatever you're, you're living right, you're doing all the things God requires you to do, and you're suffering some things, remember, that's the state where God is getting your attention. My brother, who was 53 years old, was laid off his job with the company at home, and he had been looking for a job for a year. Then this company called him. He couldn't do it because he needs hip surgery. He needs hip surgery and I don't have any insurance to get it. I asked him, does God have your attention now? Sometimes God wants to get us attention because he wants to be first in 